Okay, welcome and good day, everyone. My name is Jessica Pullen. I am the Knowledge Management Communications <clears throat> and Learning Officer for the TAN Project at Nutrition International. We are delighted to have you all here with us today for our webinar, Adapting N-Team's Technical Assistance in Bangladesh to the Nutrition Challenges Posed by COVID-19. This webinar is part one of two in a mini series we are producing. First, some housekeeping. Please note that we are recording this session and the recording will be made publicly available a few days after the webinar. Please also feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat box. It's always great to see who is participating and from where. I have noticed many people are introducing themselves already, but if you can please make sure that when you send your message, you address it to all panelists and attendees. Simply click on the option for the chat box in, at, in the to dialog and select all panelists and attendees so that everyone can see your message. If you have any questions for the speakers, you can use the chat box throughout the presentation and we will take note of them for the Q&A portion. We will also be having an experience sharing session in which we would like to hear from you directly. When you get to this portion of the webinar, you can comment in the chat box with your name and organization and use the raised hand function um, so that we can unmute you. Next slide. I'd like to start by giving you all some background on Nutrition International and our project. Formerly the Micronutrient Initiative, Nutrition International brings over 25 years of on the ground experience to end hidden hunger in over 60 countries. We do this by delivering proven nutrition interventions, conducting cutting edge nutrition research, supporting critical policy formulation, and helping to integrate nutrition into broader development programs while working in partnership with governments, donors, and implementers. One way in which we do this is through the Nutrition Technical Assistance Mechanism, or NTEAM. Through NTEAM, Nutrition International shares its expertise globally to support the scale-up of nutrition for the most vulnerable. Within NTEAM, the Technical Assistance for Nutrition Project, known as TAN, provides timely and coordinated technical assistance to help Sun Countries, the Sun Movement Secretariat, and regional coordinating bodies overcome gaps in capacity, design, and delivery of multi-sectoral national nutrition action plans. Next slide. I'd like to acknowledge TAN, the TAN Project's donor, UK Aid, as well as the Bangladesh National Nutrition Council as a TAN partner and for its support in preparing this presentation. Next slide. Without further ado, I'd like to acknowledge our moderator for the webinar, Dr. Kefa Sampson. Dr. Sampson is a senior public health specialist with 21 years of experience in communicable disease control. He is currently the director of NTEAM at Nutrition International and is based in Ottawa, Canada. Dr. Sampson, who is originally from Nigeria, is a medical doctor and has a Master of Science in Infection and Health in the Tropics and a Master of Public Health from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine as well as a Diploma in Tropical Medicine and Hygiene from the Royal College of Physicians in London. He is also an elected fellow of the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene of London. Dr. Sampson will now give some opening remarks. Welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Jessica, for um, this very good introduction to the webinar. And good morning, afternoon or evening everyone uh, wherever you are um, i have the pleasure to welcome you to this webinar uh, as you are aware we are currently living through a period of uh, a global pandemic occasioned by the covid19 uh, virus outbreak with unprecedented health and economic impact on all countries the pandemic, no doubt, constitutes a major threat to food security and nutrition among millions around the world as we know it. And this pandemic has prompted almost all countries to mount emergency scale up of public health preparedness and response, but also the protection of vulnerable populations and efforts to mitigate the broader social and economic dimensions of the pandemic, including uh, nutrition. So Bangladesh is one of such countries that took very proactive steps 
uh, steps uh, by mounting a multi-sectoral response that prioritized nutrition as an integral component of its uh, national response to the epidemic, um, committing considerable amount of domestic resources to address the impact of the pandemic. So this webinar, as has been mentioned by Jessica, is the second of um, uh, webinars planned. Uh, I mean, is the first of two webinars planned so far, with the second being uh, um, on Ethiopia coming in a few weeks. And this is organized with the sole purpose of sharing the experience of Bangladesh led by its uh, National Nutrition Council. And also uh, how Nutrition International's end team aligned itself with the country's priority uh, to help the country in its response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So the objective of the webinar uh, will be that we'll be able to learn more about incorporating nutrition considerations into the response to COVID-19 uh, from the experience of a government such as Bangladesh, explore how trans-technical uh, assistance in Bangladesh rapidly adapted itself to support the response planning and also provide an opportunity for participants to ask questions about and share their own experience with adapting nutrition related work in response to not just COVID-19, but perhaps other uh, public health emergencies of international concern in the future. So the format of this webinar will follow three parts. Uh, it will consist of a 35 minute um, dedicated to presentation by three distinguished speakers that we have today, followed by 40 minutes of questions and answers uh, and then experience sharing. So our three presenters today will be uh, Ms. Saika Siraj, who is the country director for Nutrition International in Bangladesh, uh, who will walk us through a broad overview of the nutrition response in Bangladesh uh, to this pandemic. This will be followed by Dr. Iqbal Kabir, our, our lead consultant for NTEAM in Bangladesh, who will then provide us with a detailed um, examination of two key elements of the response, uh, namely the revision of food baskets guidelines for use in the relief programs, and the forecasting of the impact of the epidemic, of the pandemic, sorry. And finally, uh, we will have uh, Dr. Kalurul Rahman, who is the Director General of the Bangladesh National, National Nutrition Council, who will walk us through the mitigation measures that were prioritized by the country. So on this note, um, I will um, call on our first presenter, who is uh, Dr. Saika. Can you move to the next slide, please? I will call on our first presenter, Saika Siraj. Saika Siraj is the Nutrition International Country Director. A trained nutritionist, Saika holds a master's degree in public health from Bragg University and has over 15 years of experience in maternal and child health and nutrition. Saika has been the nutrition focal point for a number of organizations, notably the International Food Research Institute and Save the Children in Bangladesh. Saika is an active member of the Nutrition Working Group, Infant and Young Child Feeding Alliance and Health and the Health uh, Population Nutrition Behavior Change Communication Working Group in Bangladesh, where she supports in the development of national level strategies and frameworks. She was also the coordinator of the South Asian Policy Leadership for Improved Nutrition and Growth Sectorial and the co-chair of the Civil Society Alliance for the Scaling of Nutrition uh, Network in Bangladesh. Prior to joining Nutrition International, Saika led the health, nutrition, and population programs at BRAC. Saika, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Kefas. Can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. 
Um, as we all know, pandemic was not a frequently used word in your daily vocabulary, but today, regardless of where we are, COVID-19 pandemic has become an integral part of our lives and our conversation. Uh, with sudden outbreak of COVID-19, uh, several countries, including Bangladesh, were compelled to uh, implement strict lockdowns. Uh, in turn, not only uh, affected the this in turn not only affected the economy of the country, but also several other aspects of uh, individuals' lives. Hunger and nutrition being one of it, which uh, largely affected the most vulnerable section of the society, especially women, adolescents, and children being at the dominance. Today, we will be sharing uh, some of the key aspects of the work, uh, especially on the priority actions that government has taken towards nutrition and food security during and post COVID in Bangladesh under the leadership of BNNC and supported by all the partners, including NTIM, uh, such as uh, promoting multi-sectoral coordination, developing cost of food and nutrition security response framework, uh, establishing nutrition surveillance system, et cetera. So uh, could you please go to the next slide? Uh, though NTIM TAN uh, got this opportunity today to present the efforts uh, made by government of Bangladesh, uh, but this endeavor definitely includes the efforts of all uh, nutrition partners uh, in the country. Today, we take the privilege to represent all the nutrition partners of Bangladesh. As you can see in the slide, there are UN bodies, academy, uh, academia, research organizations, uh, and uh, uh, the TAN uh, program being supported by UK Aid. Um, with a strong collaboration among the partners, BNNC and all key stakeholders of government together, uh, we could uh, take some meaningful concrete steps towards fighting uh, malnutrition. Uh, next step, please. Next slide. So in Bangladesh, we identified the first case of COVID-19 in early uh, March. And from March 26, the lockdown started. Uh, from early June, some of the offices and ready-made garment sector started partially functioning, um, but um, early September, all government offices uh, were declared open until now those are open. Uh, but all the educational institutes are still closed. Uh, we saw a little bit of decline recently in, in the case um, numbers, but we still see significant amount of cases every day being reported. Uh, please go to the next slide. So from the very beginning, government of Bangladesh took different measures to support the most vulnerable uh, population during the pandemic. And BNNC took uh, quick steps to determine the impact of COVID-19 on nutrition and projection of the possible malnutrition burden in post-COVID scenario in Bangladesh. Uh, in this later rapid assessment of a severely acute malnutrition facility preparedness and functionality. Uh, besides the assessments, some plans and guidelines were also developed and under BNNC's leadership, there was a relook and review of the guidelines for the food packages uh, for disaster, including COVID-19, with technical support of multi-stakeholders and including NTIM. Also, nutrition issues were incorporated in the uh, Bangladesh Preparedness and Response Plan for COVID. As I mentioned earlier, government uh, provided um, around, um, you know, US, uh, USD 111.2 billion financial support, which is around 3.3% of our total GDP. Uh, and these included stimulus packages for small and medium farmers, SME rate, interest rates were lowered, both targets and investment for social safety net programs were increased. And most significantly, the the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare's annual budget was increased by almost 15%. Uh, next slide, please. The support of NTIM uh, to BNNC will be discussed in details uh, by the next speakers uh, today. So I won't go into a lot of details. I just wanted to highlight a few things here. Uh, one of the um, uh, very first supports was to, uh, you know, the initiatives that's, that was laid by BNNC and team advocated with uh, Sun uh, Secretariat and mobilized Sun multi-stakeholder uh, platform. 
platform to support the response uh, of, of, on nutrition in COVID and also uh, mobilize research and academic groups uh, such as I did as GRB, Dhaka University, uh, IFPRI and others who were working uh, uh, towards uh, generating evidence base and uh, de helping the decision making of government. Infim TA providers uh, were also part of COVID technical committees and supported in the dissemination of the reports and guidelines that were uh, prepared to the highest level policy and decision makers. But it will not end here. Our follow up and support will go on uh, in the implementation of the recommendations as per the impact of COVID-19 report. Uh, and um, we are now uh, working in preparing policy briefs, cost is response uh, framework and st uh, establishing serverless systems. So I will stop here and thank you all. And uh, you will hear about more about these things uh, with, from the next presenters. Hi, Kefis. You're just on mute, actually. Okay. Okay. Thank you again, uh, Saika. Uh, our next presenter is Dr. Iqbal Kabil. Iqbal Kabil leads a team of NTIM consultants supporting the Bangladesh National Nutrition Council with the operationalization of the National Plan of Action for Nutrition and the Technical Assistance for Nutrition Project supported by the UK aid. Dr. Kabil brings a community perspective to the design of nutrition programs that ensures the most vulnerable are considered. Previously, Dr. Kabil worked with at-risk populations in Bangladesh and Tanzania, drought-stricken populations in Ethiopia, and war-torn communities in Afghanistan and Yemen. He was also Chief of Field Operations and Emergency and Chief YCSD and senior nutrition specialist for UNICEF in Afghanistan and Yemen, and task team leader in the World Bank for large nutrition projects. Dr. Kabir, please. Dr. Kabir, you have the floor. Thank you, Dr. Kafas. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Kafas. And uh, uh, next slide, please. Good morning and good afternoon and good evening, everybody, depending on where you are. Thanks, uh, the uh, for setting the context for remaining part of the uh, session. In any emergency, time is the essence to ensure good sec uh, food security to the population in general and specific to vulnerable groups due to the arrival of COVID-19. With the request from the Ministry of Disaster Management and Relief, the Ministry of Health formed a 11-member te technical expert committee under the leadership of the Bangladesh National Nutrition Council and the National Nutrition Services to review and develop an emergency food basket. The purpose was to assess the food requirements of different age and target groups affected by any disaster and COVID in particular. Review the content of current relief dry food basket and recommend nutritionally balanced food basket considering their cost, nutrition value, safety, availability, accessibility, and the preparation, etc. On a fast track basis, the technical committee prepared a detailed technical report, including recommended food baskets during disaster, including COVID uh, affected population, and also developed and widely shared the, the key nutrition messages. Next slide, please. So the recommended guideline was immediately followed by uh, relief responses from the government, uh, both in cash and kinds. For example, like say, for example, 137 million BDT, 
which is almost like you know, equivalent of 1.6 million USD through government channel food and money through their uh, local administration. At the same time, during the National Nutrition Week in April, end April, the Bangladesh National Nutrition Council and Institute of Public Health and Nutrition distributed their share of the resources through the district and sub-district nutrition coordination committee to purchase food for the vulnerable population in all districts and sub-districts in Bangladesh. In addition, under the food friendly programs, government distributed about 30 kilo rice per family among total 5 million poor families. Next slide, please. Following this, the next immediate need from the government was to know the possible impact of COVID-19 on nutrition in short, medium, and long term in order to prevent fallback of countries gains so far made of the current nutrition situation, and also to prevent this health crisis to turn into a food security and nutrition crisis. And being the nutrition apex body in the country, Bangladesh National Nutrition Council formed an expert committee on food security and nutrition. Members were drawn from eminent research organizations like ICDDRB, the IFRI academic institution like Institute of Nutrition Food Science of Dhaka University, UN agencies like UNICEF, WHO, WFP, FAO, NGOs like CARE, GAIN, Save the Children, SCF, and members from the nutrition and food security cluster. And the task was to estimate the malnutrition case burden during and post COVID-19 period. And also to prepare a policy brief with the recommendation for, uh, for higher authorities and to develop a workable solution for government to respond to the nutrition crisis in a swift and effective manner. The key focus was on issues to review the impact of COVID-19 on various underlying drivers linked to nutrition outcomes, such as the access and uptake of health and nutrition services, food security issues, food chain, panic buying, access to food market, food price, and availability of nutritious food, ongoing uh, social safety net programs and their status, the employment, income, and coping mechanism adapted by poor for survival, and also the small and medium enterprises, which are the key drivers of Bangladesh economy. Next slide, please. In our exercise, you know, so BNNC has adopted the widely used conceptual pathways between the underlying factors and the malnutrition outcomes. Uh, which was adapted as per the needs of this work uh, and take as a sort of basis to further understand the impact of COVID-19 on malnutrition as represented in this figure. And we know that COVID's impact on nutrition would likely manifest itself through multiple pathways in the short, medium, and long term. In the process, social inequalities will contribute to differential impacts. So as portrayed here, the immediate consequences of COVID-19 and the subsequent lockdown due to government's extended holidays. It impacted all known underlying determinants of malnutrition in the country, such as the food security, the behavior and practices of population, including the stigma and all this misinformation, and access to health and nutrition services, both in quantity and quality. The combination of which eventually leads to the poor dietary intake and utilization, combined with the increased occurrence of illness, resulted in increased malnutrition, high morbidity, and mortality as final consequence. Next slide, please. Let's see what happened to Bangladesh of all these underlying fact issues and proximity issues. As a few examples, you know. The, at the beginning, you know, COVID pandemic severely reduced in, incomes across all segments, 
but the poorest were left most vulnerable. The, it was estimated that you know, say Bangladesh has already 24%, 24.3% poor population. And due to this COVID, there will be, it will rise to 35%. You know, already we have 39 million uh, poor uh, people and half of them are severely uh, uh, you know, extreme poor who cannot afford a minimum food basket. So at the beginning of the lockdown, income gone down by 73% to 75% among moderate and extremely poor groups and by 65% among non-poor groups. So everybody was affected. No one was immune. Income shock was hard and deeply experienced by all section of population groups as seen from this slide. This fall in income was seen in both urban and rural areas, but urban poor were hardly hardest hit compared to the uh, rural poor. For instance, two thirds of urban slum dwellers lost their source of income. There was an increase in the price of all varieties of rice, which is our staple food in Bangladesh, due to disruption of food chain. About 25 to 30% of poor reduced expenditure on food, a substantial number household in urban slums and in rural settings who could afford three meals a day before the COVID had reduced food consumption and adopted various negative coping mechanisms for survival. About 70% households were unable to provide diversified diet to their children aged 6 to 23 months. In addition, just an example, you know, 2.9 million poor students have been missing their regular school feeding since the schools are not open yet. Though WFP and uh, government is trying to reach, reach out to them to deliver this food, but it's very difficult which is a substantial source of nutrition for this group. Next slide, please. So the, the, in addition, uh, the health and nutrition services for children and women immediately after COVID-19 crisis were badly interrupted. For example, I'm just giving one or two examples here. You know, Bangladesh, before this COVID, Bangladesh had a good track record on the health fronts, you know, the good immunization coverage and the anti-national coverage and reduction of under five mortality, child mortality, all this good track record. But what we have seen during the COVID, you know, the admission of severe equipment malnutrition dropped by 40 to 84% in April, you know, say so if you look at, and, and also the services for the pregnant and lactating women, which are related to nutrition, nutrition related services also gone down. For example, the antenatal care services reduced by 31%. Counseling during antenatal services gone down by 13 to 37% and iron folic acid distribution reduced by 15 to 38%. So these are a few examples. Though the situation of access and use of services are improving since June, but still below compared to the pre-COVID time. Next slide, please. So what is the implication of all this? The, so the implication of it that the, the case burden of severe equipment malnutrition will increase. So as demonstrated, all proximate and underlying determinants of malnutrition as for an increased mortality, inadequate access to various services and their low and limited uptake, food insecurity, low income and employment opportunities have already deteriorated substantially, as we have seen. In July this year, the Lancet published the impact projection based on list modeling methodology and macroeconomic and microeconomic analysis of multiple indicators in 118 countries, including Bangladesh, and concluded that, you know, the wasting may increase by 14.3% in 2020. So what happened in Bangladesh? Let's see. So we wanted to, uh, since there was uh, uh, the task to assess the situation and also to 
come up with a scenario and the projected projection level of malnutrition in the country due to COVID. So at the time of writing of the first version of this document in April, so you know, in April 2020, the inter international research community had not yet uh, published any prediction or projection on the impact of COVID on malnutrition. So what assess, so in creating the possible scenario, the Bangladesh National Nutrition Council has developed its own methodology by aligning the WHO threshold level for global acute malnutrition cutoff. Like say, for example, the poor, serious and critical emergency, depending on the level of the, uh, the, the status. So this threshold were taken as a vantage point for further analysis on which to base the prediction on wasting in Bangladesh over the next 12 months. And calculating the case burden of severe and moderate acute malnutrition, three possible scenarios were uh, have been considered, aligning with this cutoff level, WHO cutoff level, uh, and corresponding statistics of Bangladesh in 2011, 2014, and 2017 and 18. Assuming that you know the the gain made will uh, the country will slide back. To, to that, you know, the previous situation. So, so three scenarios were assessed. The same three time period have been used to predict the nutrition situation that might emerge during the COVID nineteen period, both at national and also in targeted twenty four priority districts. So, three scenarios were like the scenario one. The assumption was the lockdown uh, continues till the end of May. But the current, it will not have much, you know, the current level of malnutrition will not change much. It's a best case scenario. So it will prevail the current level, which is almost like 8%, which is already poor according to WHO cutoff level. So next slide, please. So we created this uh, three scenarios. The scenario one, as I have said, lockdown will continue till the end of May. Status, you know, say the status of malnutrition of the current level will prevail. The coverage and access to service service is temporarily be reduced, and employment short term. And the gum rate case would be around eight percent, which is uh, neatly fit with WHO threshold of ten percent below ten percent of this one. So the second scenario was uh, the assumption was for the second scenario the lockdown will continue till the end of May and moderate deterioration of nutrition situation with coverage and access to services moderately reduced with increased food shortage and un unemployment will be in the medium term. And the gum rate would raise to 14%, which is around uh, the serious level, cutoff level for uh, gum of WHO. So that was the level also in 2014 in Bangladesh. So the last one was the, the critical emergency or the scenario three, which is the worst case scenario. And the assumption was second lockdown will, uh, will, impose due to, will be imposed due to ins uh, resurgence of second wave of COVID and substantial deterioration of the nutrition situation and the coverage and access to service severely reduced with increased food shortage and unemployment will be permanent and the gum rate will go up up to 16 percent which was the case in 2011 in bangladesh and also it neatly meets the the critical and emergency cutoff level for uh, for you know for the who cutoff level but the expert committee opined that you know they decided that Though the government imposed extended general holiday, which continued till end of May, had a prolonged impact on the economy. However, there will be a moderate deterioration of underlying determinants considering the other factors. Thus, the scenario two was considered to be the most likely scenario in Bangladesh. Next slide, please. What it means, if we take this uh, scenario two, and so, what would be the sort of the, the case burden in Bangladesh? So we have calculated case burden for all three scenarios. 
you know, we have taken the glo uh, global equipment nutrition rate, we have taken the, uh, the moderate equipment nutrition and the sum, and the children who would need the treatment for their complications. So in the case of burden, in the case burden projection for some and mom, the severe equipment nutrition and moderate equipment nutrition, calculations were made both for the entire country as a whole, as well as for the 26 priority districts selected through assessment of uh, a high, you know, these districts were selected based on the high priority districts identified already by the, uh, uh, the need assessment working group in the country and also the humanitarian co uh, coordination thus they have identified this uh, based on the impact of different things in the uh, these 26 districts and with high prevalence of severe equipment nutrition from our track record based on from the unicef the mixed report they have by districts uh, uh, on 29 you know 2019 uh, figure so we have taken that one and a high number of admission of some cases in before the COVID onset, you know, in 2019. And also depending on the current bed capacity and the other resource uh, for admission to manage the admission of some patients. So the projection uh, of burden of equipment nutrition at national level under the scenario two the global equipment burden for the whole country would be around 6 million, 6 million plus for next 12 months, of which the severe equipment nutrition would be at around 188,000. And of them, 19,000 to 28,000 children would require hospital based management and treatment for medical complications. For this the projection for the uh, 26 priority districts from where 61% of the total case comes and the total population comes. You know, so, so he said the estimate, estimated total gum burden for this 26 districts would be 3. about 3.6 million, of which some would be 115,000, of which about 11,000 to 17,000 would require hospital-based management and treatment for medical facilities. So next slide, please. So these were our findings. So based on the findings, one of the tasks was for this group was to come up with the recommendations. What would be our rec recommendation and what was the recommendation in this report? So the based on the project, projected situation, there is a dire need for a well-coordinated and harmonized preventive and mitigating approach to prevent hunger, malnutrition, and deaths. Therefore, a three-pronged multi-sectoral action strategy was recommended, which includes developing a costed, comprehensive food and nutrition security response framework. We'll hear about it more. In the, so, so that was one first recommendation. And this will focus on this, uh, the, the social economic response framework would focus on the building back better and strengthening on, uh, strengthening on, on strengthening ongoing nutrition interventions using the different service delivery platforms and also improving the behavior change communication across all nutrition programs and so on and so on and also targeting the most vulnerable. Second recommendation was to establish and ensure, establish and ensuring a multi-sectoral approach to enhance and upscale intersectoral coordination mechanism for nutrition and further improve, you know, say, and, and also to engage actively with nutrition support, other support platform like Nutrition Development Partners Group, local consultative group for nutrition and health population nutrition sector program, et cetera. And BNC would take a lead role into this process with its uh, partners, 22 ministries, you know, uh, with whom BNC has their uh, work done. And the last one was, the last recommendation was to institutionalize a robust monitoring, evaluation, and surveillance system for evidence-based tracking of multi-sectoral COVID-19 specific, COVID specific nutrition responses, including accessibility, coverage, 
and quality of services. So let me finish with a quote from a recent Lancet modeling exercise. Uh, by the way, before I finish, these two reports, uh, the projection report, the assessment projection report, and the policy brief prepared based on this uh, projection report are already uh, posted in BNC website. So the, link, the links will be provided into our chat box soon. So you, you, may, you may have access to, to these two documents. So as I said, let me finish with my last sort of a quote. A recent Lancet modeling exercise estimates that, quote, if routine healthcare is disrupted and access to food is decreased, the increase in child and maternal death will be devastating. A 10 to 50% increase in wasting prevalence could account for an 18 to 23% 23, 23 increase in child death in the next six months. So the prompt actions by the policymakers based on evidence, mobilizing and coordinating with all partners together and putting a system in place to monitor the progress with an accountability frame mechanism would prevent to this unwanted suffering and death happens in Bangladesh. So thank everybody for your patient sharing. Thanks to everybody. Over to Kafas. Thank you very much uh, indeed, Dr. Iqbal, for walking us through these very crucial um, elements of the response. Uh, you have uh, clearly highlighted um, the importance of uh, impact assessment, uh, which provided a very sound basis for the multi-sectoral action that ensued, um, and also the coherent strategy that was developed to see the uh, action through in a very coordinated manner. So on this note, I will invite our, our last presenter for uh, this morning, uh, Dr. Khalilul Rahman. Dr. Rahman is the Director General of the Bangladesh Nutrition, National Nutrition Council, a medical professional with a master's uh, of public health uh, degree and nutrition. Dr. Rahman is as the Director General of the Bangladesh National Nutrition Council leads then the apex governance body uh, in Bangladesh for nutrition. The BNNC is responsible for formulating national nutrition policy, strengthening nutrition governance at national and subnational levels, advocating for the prioritization of nutrition, mobilizing resources for nutrition and knowledge management. Previously, Dr. Rahman had several, held several uh, senior positions uh, within the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, including the director of the Institute for Public Health Nutrition and Civil Surgeon, head of the district health system, as well as the grassroots level, and is an active member of the Bangladesh Medical and Dental Council. Dr. Rahman, you're welcome to take the floor. Sorry, Dr. Rahman, you are actually on mute. Thank, thank you, thank Dr. Kefa Samsung. And thank you, Dr. Iqbal Kabir and uh, Mr. Saika Siraj for a nice presentation today. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I am on the, la I'm the last presenter. I am going to present what actions we have prioritized for the impact uh, analysis. We have prioritized nine actions of them. Uh, we have uh, grouped in five groups. That one is strengthening group, where the number one action was selected as the governance and leadership to enhance coordination in legislation, policy, regulation across nutrition sensitive and nutrition specific programs and sectors. Number two action, uh, prioritized actions was uh, essential nutrition service delivery for building back to pre-COVID situation. And number three actions 
was selected as coordination between health and other key sectors to increase access and referral to nutrition services. You know, nutrition is not a single issue. It's a multi-sectoral um, problem, so we need coordination. And number four activities uh, action was selected that SBCC activities to disseminate integrated nutrition messages within COVID-19 context, including digitally. And develop and support platform, we have, uh, have selected the priorities action is innovative approach to support dietary adequacy and diversity. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, thank you. Uh, number six action was prioritized as access to quality nutrition interventions with adequate coverage through specific and sensitive programs in urban areas. Number seven, information system to enhance coordination, increase accountability and interoperability, interoperability between existing MIS of sectors and partners, as for example, NIPU and FPMU. Number eight, uh, prioritize action is integrated inter in nutrition intervention using existing entry points and multiple community and sectoral platforms, community and youth engagement. And last action is focus on creating enable environment for establishing facilities for safe and healthy food in urban areas, emphasizing emerging COVID-19 situation. Next slide, please. Uh, what are the reflections on on the success factors, lesson learned and challenges? The reflection of success factors was a quick in identification of emerging needs and responding it in timely manner. Leadership at the partnership, stakeholder coordination and focus towards common goal, devising innovative solutions and integrated and inclusive approach specific focus on vulnerable groups, including at the subnational level. And listen large. Yes, of course, we have uh, some listen large here. The key is to ensure response strategic focus on immediate relief and long-term measures. Need for ready to use or easy to adapt standard operating protocols, technical and implementation guidelines focusing on immediate relief measures during during a public health crisis and flexibility is key to adapt to emerging crisis and the challenges yes of course we have some challenge the challenge was coordinating remotely and virtually during the initial stage of pandemic with extremely tight timeliness and second one adapting to the virtual way of working with this i would like to uh, conclude the uh, two days uh, pre uh, presentation. Uh, thanks everybody for patient sharing. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, indeed, uh, Dr. Rahman, for um, such a very succinct uh, presentation outlining the actions taken by government, which demonstrates uh, real um, not only a real commitment, but uh, good stewardship from the government on that side uh, and success factors uh, that we can also learn um, from your experience. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, we are now moving gears to uh, the questions and answers. And uh, we have a few questions that have been asked uh, uh, within the chat as, as requested. So, I will um go on to ask to direct the questions to the presenters and then uh, we will uh, take it up from there so we have a question for dr rahman uh, the importance of nutrition is often not recognized as are also the role played by underlying socioeconomic political and budget, budgetary challenges in determining nutrition outcomes successful. And we all know that the coordination of nutrition efforts can be 
challenging. As a leader of the BNNC, can you tell us more about the efforts the BNNC is making to gather under one platform the many stakeholders uh, in nutrition specific and nutrition sensitive sectors, uh, specifically during the challenging time of the COVID-19. So it's about um, maybe shedding some more light on the coordination mechanism within Bangladesh. Over to you, um, Dr. Rahman. Hi, Dr. Rahman, you're on mute. Probably, uh, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Kefas, for arising the uh, right question of how the BNNC is successful. So, yes, of course, understanding and cause, understanding cause and consequence of malnutrition is not common, and few people con uh, conceive nutrition with that insight. As nutrition is a multi sectoral issue. Coordination is very important and is a common challenge. However, coordination is the usual way of doing business by BNNC. BNNC is mandated to do that. BNNC being the highest level policy coordination body of nutrition with honorable prime minister as chair. So BNNC has strong convening power also. Over the years, BNNC has been doing this. BNNC successfully developed part partnerships with a wide number of multisectoral partners, which made the task easier. I think uh, it's the beauty of BNNC that it has achieved uh, by the leadership as the multisectoral and multi-level and multi-stakeholder coordination. Thank you, Dr. Kepas. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rahman, for that. We have another question, and this time directed to uh, Dr. Kabir. Um, the question is that, can you please clarify how NI changed its work plan in Bangladesh due to COVID? I think we need to clarify that the food basket guidelines and the food focus report were changes to our TA work plan. We adapted to include this. If I understand, yeah, if I understand the question is uh, uh, the how we adapted ourselves and changed our work plan. Yes. Is that the question? Yeah. Yes, you know, that's the question. Yeah. You know, uh, the beauty of the, the Bangladesh government and also BNNC, and also I believe the, the TA providers here, that you know, so always we have looked at the need-based sort of, and what is the need need of the time and need of the country, and uh, so uh, that's why the flexibility issue was brought by uh, the director general here. That was one of the you know, success factors. So these were not these two tasks were not included in in the original tour of our team here. But when we you know, realize that these are the needs and government wants it, and then immediately, you know, so we discuss with our regional team and they also uh, you know, you know, agreed. And since the request and the need is from the government. So without thinking of what is in the TUR and what is in the contract or whatever, and then, then we immediately responded to that one. And we took part. We actively took part in all this committee, especially I was a member of the, the expert committee the, for the 11 member committee formed by the Ministry of Health, which was chaired by Dr. Khalil Rahman and uh, the secretary was the NNS. And we led the group technically and supported. The same thing we did and at the beginning of the crisis also, we raised this issue that, you know, uh, based our, on our experiences in other countries and our previous experiences. And, and we know that this type of pandemic will have impact on nutrition. And, you know, nutrition is a sort of an outcome, 
unless unless you know so you manage it properly then you know the, you cannot prevent it to happen so we brought this knowledge to bnnc and the and the partners and we discuss among ourselves and we uh, immediately agreed to uh, support and bnnc agreed to lead this process to to you know say uh, take this lead to do the assessment and raise it to the highest level the sum you know focal point and the sum you know, multi sector platform and then they mobilized the partners and then we took this task so what i say that you know say this is the beauty of the you know this uh, assignment there is uh, flexibility and need based and if it is need of the country uh, the tan was very supportive to you know both technically and you know, operationally this helped us so thank you thank you very much for that and i can add that at uh, at an organizational level this has been done across the board throughout the um and team portfolio to reexamine the the ta support that uh, we are providing uh, in order to ensure that they are, they are aligned to the emerging priorities of the countries in the light of the covid-19 so we have another we have another question this time for dr saika um did tan or ni more broadly implement any specific nutrition intervention in bangladesh for helping to reduce malnutrition during the covid-19 okay so uh, okay first can you repeat it uh, during the question is it? asking yeah. about what specific nutrition intervention mm -hmm. was implemented by nutrition international in bangladesh specifically for helping to reduce malnutrition during the covid-19 pandemic right right thank you so much thank you so much for the question i think um, uh, part of it already was covered uh, in the presentation today the technical support and and uh, you know uh, being part of the assessment and reports but also uh, through ni's other activities besides tan uh, we uh, work directly with the government in uh, you know uh, with the ministry of health ministry of industries and uh, ministry of education so we try to help and support whatever was the need of that uh, this time and um, in in all of those interventions uh, in i supports uh, the soil iodization uh, program universal soil iodization program in bangladesh and throughout uh, the pandemic period we are we were providing support through digital platforms and through you know um, meetings and and um, whichever way we could to uh, ensure that the quality is maintained uh, and then we also were involved in the rice fortification program uh, with government and wfp and gain and there also we provided technical support that you know all this um, oms program open market sale that government introduced during the covid that uh, the rice with fortified rice we were there to support also and um, uh, regarding the other programs we have like the vitamin a campaign recently just happened uh, and i always uh, have been a partner with government in the vitamin a supplementation program for under 5 children and uh, recently uh, the round that happened we were on the ground supporting government helping them especially in hard to reach areas uh, regarding promotion and since you know things like that uh, so i think uh, of through all of our projects and our field staff and uh, all all of our different platforms that we are connected to we try to be useful we try to be uh, helpful uh, and and um, wanted to do whatever is needed uh, during covid Uh, and um, we actually um, uh, learned many new ways to utilize the digital platform to support you know ground level staff ground level workers the health workers and everyone hope i have answered uh, your question correctly thank you thanks uh, saika uh, we have um, more questions here for dr rahman the question is out of these nine priority actions that you mentioned what are those two priorities which according to you might be most challenging to implement 
how do you plan to overcome these challenges? What would be those areas where you will require support from partners and donors? Thank you, uh, Dr. Kefa Samsung. Uh, yes, I have mentioned nine, uh, nine priorities action. If you ask me to choose two of them, uh, from uh, two of them, then uh, definitely I will choose one, question number one, and maybe question number seven. Because uh, question number one and question number seven are the core functions of BNNC that goes uh, in close uh, in that uh, relation to BNNC. Others are mostly programmatic roles to be implemented by other stakeholders. So, however, BNNC has a coordinating role. BNNC has been doing uh, the number one. Uh, if you show the slide, uh, then we, people can see what number one uh, says. And uh, BNNC, uh, number one, that the governance leadership, this is the role uh, and uh, to enhance coordination. This is the main role of BNNC. If we can uh, give leadership, we can give uh, proper uh, governance, then it will be uh, the, uh, easier for us to uh, achieve the goal and we are achieved a lot. However, the COVID-19 has made the context more challenging. So BNNC need technical assistance on those. BNNC achieved significant technical assistance from different partners and hope that it will continue. By this way, we can overcome the challenges and achieve our goal. I think this number one and number seven, next slide please. In number seven, we have mentioned that information system to enhance coordination, increase accountability and interoperability uh, between MIS of sectors because we need data for uh, the uh, future planning and future policy level uh, advocacy. So uh, I would uh, uh, seek support for the technical assistant uh, regarding this one and seven, especially the seven one. Thank you, Dr. Thank Thomas. you very much indeed. Um, so one question was directed to me and it was asking the possibility for NTIM to develop technical policy brief to support local government, district or county health authorities to gain maximum benefits from NTIM TA. And, and the answer is uh, yes, I think NTIM can do that and we will take uh, note of that. Thank you very much. And I think we will close this uh, Q&A session and move on to uh, experience sharing. And with apologies to um, those that may have, uh, have their questions unanswered, um, perhaps you can use the experience sharing to, to actually uh, engage. So in this, we will request you to to indicate uh, by writing your name and the organization you work for in the chat box, and then use the raise hand function uh, at the bottom of the screen. Then you will be called upon uh, when, you are, when it is your time to speak, uh, at which time you will be unmuted. And we will give you three minutes to share your experience and learning. And again, in advance, we apologize if we cannot cover all uh, the people that may want to share experience. So just some guidance uh, that may help. Um, share a very concrete example of your role and experience in contributing to COVID-19 response planning implementation um, that can prove to be a good example for others. And share um, an experience from a country in which you work where the COVID-19 has impacted the nutrition status of the population and vulnerable groups, and how you or your organization uh, approach this issue. So this is open.
So I'm looking at um, it just so we have uh, Dr. Tamid Ahmed, uh, who is the head of International Center for Diarrheal Disease Research in Bangladesh. The floor is yours. Please um, share your experience. Thank you. Um, first of all, good day to all of you. Can you hear me? Because I was having problems with the internet connection. Can you hear me? We can hear you. I can. Oh, okay. We can hear you. Okay. Okay. So, so I am from Bangladesh. I am not the head of ICDDRB. I am uh, directing the Nutrition and Clinical Services Division. And in that position, I oversee all COVID-19 testing and treatment at ICDDRB, which means that, you know, I'm just at the forefront. Basically, I'm a clinician. I also do a uh, lot of nutrition work, working with Dr. Iqbal Kabir, Dr. Khalilur Rahman and others. So for those of you who have not been to Bangladesh, I think the first thing that I want to tell you is that Bangladesh is a uniquely pleasant and a bit strange country. And I will tell you why in the context of COVID. When COVID-19 struck, in the month of April, we had as many as three, you know, very reliable predictions, projections. And these predictions were that there would be thousands and thousands of people, you know, dying of COVID-19. And that's one of the reasons why I decided for our staff and hospital patients. But you see, now it is October, November, we haven't seen that happen. We thought that we would be seeing patients on the streets, you know, there would be panic, there would be chaos, and, you know, there won't be any seats available in the hospitals, but somehow that didn't happen. So that's why I keep on saying that, you know, the country is pleasantly strange and unique. And one of the reasons why I say this is because there's a lot of resilience, okay? And one of the things why this does not happen is because of the proactive steps that were taken in Bangladesh. One such step was the step taken by the Bangladesh National Nutrition Council that you have heard, you know, in his eloquent presentation by Dr. Iqbal Kabir and also by the DG, Dr. Khalil Rahman, and I will tell you how they managed to do it. The second most important proactive step was taken by the government itself. And I want to tell you, friends, about only one example. In the month of April, Bangladesh was expected to have flash floods affecting the major borrow crop producing areas in the east of the country. And that was frightening. If that had happened, we would have lost 20% of the entire borrow crop. You can imagine what degree of food insecurity it would have caused. But you know what happened? The government led by the agriculture minister himself mobilized all the agriculture workers, okay? from different districts because there were no workers then. You know, it was the peak of the pandemic and they were transported, ferried from different districts to cut, to reap the paddy in the fields before the flash flood uh, strikes. So that was one of the major, you know, proactive step taken. And I always cite that as an example. Then the other proactive step was the furlough the lockdown, you know, people were without any livelihoods. And when that happens, you have food insecurity and malnutrition. So we decided to lift that off. And I think because of that, we don't see that much of, you know, food insecurity out on the streets that we had witnessed in the months of 
April, May, and even in June. So these are the things that have happened in a country like Bangladesh. And then, you know, right at the beginning, what the Bangladesh National Nutrition Council did, and I'm very happy to tell you that I have gone Hello, through the uh, documents. Dr. Dr. Tam Dr. Tamid, we have a couple of uh, other people that would like okay. to speak. Thank you. I if will you stop can just here. round up, yeah. That's that's okay. Thank you very much. I just wanted to tell you that you know the document that was prepared that's unique. Even if you compare it with the global nutrition report context of COVID-19, I would say that the one that is prepared in Bangladesh is at par with that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. And I will call on um, Pialim Mustafi, uh, the Chief of Nutrition at UNICEF. Pialim, you have the floor to share your experience. Thank you so much. I was on mute and I was talking, sorry. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. I would first and foremost like to thank uh, uh, all three presenters for the excellent presentation. Uh, and uh, from my side, I'm Piali Mustafi. I'm the chief of nutrition in UNICEF but I also coordinate uh, and uh, um, coordinate the UN uh, partnership, which we have over here and work very closely with BNNC for all multi-sectoral activities. Here, I will actually um, share an experience of where uh, what happened in the last six months, we have had actually the pleasure with all the UN agencies and partners to work very closely with BNNC to jointly develop an immediate socioeconomic res response framework for COVID-19, what we call ISERF. Uh, uh, and it was launched uh, by, uh, globally by UN, but in Bangladesh, we adopted it and we worked closely in, uh, with BNNC to come up with the framework. The I ISERF actually is a collaboration framework which is designed by the uh, UN, which aims to support the government of Bangladesh in its response to COVID-19. And it goes beyond a health response and looks uh, in depth at the socioeconomic consequences of COVID-19 for the people of Bangladesh. It therefore aims to create a bridge between what we call our normal uh, UN five years planning exercise UNDAF and the upcoming uh, framework, which is going to start in next in, from 2022. So ISERF was a bridging framework for COVID response. And uh, when we started working on the ISERF six months back after uh, the COVID uh, pandemic started, one of the first things we needed to do was to conduct an assessment of impact of COVID on nutrition outcome. What was, a great, uh, what was great during this process uh, was that uh, within the tremendous support which we got uh, from BNNC under the leadership of DG, Dr. Khalilul Rahman, in collaboration with its multi-sectoral partners and aligned ministry, and we found that they had already conducted an assessment for impact of COVID-19. We, from the beginning, were part of it, but when finally the ISERF was getting developed, this report came to a very, very, um, uh, at a very unique point. And as uh, mentioned by Dr. Tamid, this report is really of a very great quality. As such, the assessment determining the impact of COVID-19 on nutrition was further elaborated and updated uh, when we started working uh, on the ISERP with the latest data and uh, uh, as the uh, COVID-19 crisis unfolded in its full magnitude and, in, in, and its impact became more clear. 
there was a second edition of this report which was also ready by august so the first report came out in april and the second report came out in august the assessment report thereby is a truly multi sectoral assessment of the impact of covid-19 on nutrition outcome reflecting impacts on food chains food safety delivery of nutrition services school feeding program and nutrition sensitive social protection and more this was very much presented by dr iqbal kabir just in the presentation what is more the process of development of the assessment really ensured that the government with all relevant ministries and partners were aligned and on the same page with regard to prioritization in response to covid-19 to re reduce in impacts on nutrition outcomes as such the assessment document supported immensely for un to come up with the response plan uh, along with the government and will also actually contribute largely in shaping the new un development framework which is a planning document which will which will be which is a planning process which has already started uh, beyond covid and the uh, framework will be launched in 2022 and it will be a five years program so this assessment not only helped in coming up with the un uh, joint response plan which with the leadership of bnnc but will also help in developing the next five years plan of the U U un uh, again with which will be very much aligned with the government plans thank you over thank you very much uh, pialing for for your intervention uh, and sharing of experience which is uh, really uh, demonstrating a multi sectoral approach by all the stakeholders we will have ruhina binta and <clears throat> that will be uh, the last we can take for this um morning so ruhina please thank you kefas uh, uh, and uh, thank you for giving me the floor i'm ruhina i'm working in health nutrition and population program of brac um, uh, so uh, i am very grateful to be uh, grateful to attend this webinar which was very informative and pertinent to my work and the current scenario of bangladesh and i also like to thank all the panelists and the speakers moderators and the attendees for the uh, nice uh, presentation and uh, insights they have shared in this through this webinar so i will not uh, i am uh, going to share our experience of uh, our experience what we have done uh, for the covid-19 situation in regard of uh, nutrition so Uh, uh after the uh, pand uh pandemic have started in bangladesh uh, we started a program called community support team uh, through our community health workers and in uh, and we also selected some volunteers to support our um, uh, intervention and in collaboration with the un agencies dghs and brac we have implemented this project in the uh, dhaka north city corporation and we have uh, uh, reached all the 54 54 words of um, dhaka north city corporation under this um, project we are uh, doing the syndromic surveillance of covid-19 to curb the spread of uh, the virus and uh, reduce the burden of uh, 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 reduce the burden of um, uh, health system so our uh, volunteers are ensuring quarantine of the virus fighters and the families uh, during the quarantine period we are supporting the um, virus fighters with the food basket which consists five food groups and ensures all the macro and micronutrients uh, um, needed by the uh, family members and the virus fighter himself or herself giving the you know, who are suffering from the covid like covid like syndromes or have the covid uh, uh, or be tested the covid positive so this project is uh, funded by the wfp and we are providing this food support to the uh, poor families who are uh, facing problem to uh, uh, arrange their uh, food when they are uh, uh, 
um, ensuring the quarantine. So this uh, project, is, this project is really uh, helpful for the. Uh, people of slum areas and the low socioeconomic condition uh, to have their nutrition support and ensure rent. And also we are providing them the essential medicines and we are uh, 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 connecting them to the telemedicine support um, to our doctors. So that was my experience uh, of from Black uh, regarding the COVID-19 situation and the nutrition perspective. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Rohina, and thanks to all that shared <clears throat> these very valuable experiences. Uh, so we are coming to the end of this webinar, and in, in closing, I would like to invite um, Dr. Rahman once again, the Director General of BNNC, to give some few remarks uh, before we close. Thank you, Dr. Kifas Samsung, and thank you everybody for mentioning BNNC. First of all, I would like to take the opportunity to thank you all who participate and just made this webinar a fruitful one. It's really encouraging for us to see such an esteemed contribution and recognition from around the globe. You know, BNNC has the national responsibility of coordinating and guide, guiding multi-sectoral nutritional stakeholders during normal and as well as crisis time. BNNC will continue to do so in coming days. We are really grateful to our partners, especially and team, for their cooperation and assistance. With these few words, I would like to thank uh, everybody, those who are in um, today's webinar and the organizers and in team and the, uh, all uh, partners and stakeholders. Thank you, thank you very much, stay safe. In closing, I would like to sum up uh, this webinar session by saying that it is evident that the government of Bangladesh understood the imperative of a strong and multi-sector response to the pandemic and prioritized nutrition and food security, not only to provide uh, some immediate relief, but also to forestall reversal of the gains in nutrition in general, uh, as it relates to the uh, nutrition status and indicators uh, of the country, particularly among the under five children. We've also learned that a well thought out prioritized action by the government of Bangladesh, further demonstrating how crucial and indispensable government stewardship can be in such situations. The Bangladesh experience reaffirms the need for TA providers and partners to have the uh, needed flexibility to align with and support the government priorities. A systematic and methodical approach based on um, a very sound causal pathway analysis, economic analysis that covered a broad uh, spectrum of the society, including vulnerable populations as the basis for prioritization was also key. So overall, this webinar reminded us of what is possible to achieve with effective leadership, sound analysis, coordination, and coherence in the national response. An experience worthy of note for all countries and we would like to thank, the, uh, th thank Bangladesh and particularly uh, BNNC for sharing this invaluable experience with all of us. I would also like to thank all the panelists, uh, presenters uh, who have provided very um, informative and insightful presentations and for the audience for uh, listening and uh, for your participation. Thank you very much. And I let me also thank the N team, uh, team that uh, helped to organize this webinar, uh, Jessica, Srikant, uh, Sandra, uh, for, for excellent work in organizing the webinar. Thank you very much. Uh, the webinar is adjourned. Thank you, everybody.